Coming up next, what you should do if you're feeling stuck. And then I'll tell you the only person you should be comparing yourself to. We'll take your calls and your chats, and it all starts right now. I am coming to you live from Ramsey Studios in Nashville, and you are joining a conversation about who you are, what you were created to do, where you want to do it, and how to get there. It is about your purpose, because you were created to fill a unique role through your work. In other words, you were created to contribute. That means you are tremendously valuable, and it means you must figure it out, and you must fill that role. Somebody out there needs you to be the best version of you, and that's why the Ken Coleman Show exists, to help you get clear so you can get qualified, to help you get connected so you can get started, to help you get promoted so you can get your dream job, to give yourself away. Work like no one else. 844-747-2577. That's the number to jump in. So you're watching right now on YouTube live, or maybe you're watching via on demand. You can watch it later, of course. But if you're watching this right now, one o'clock, uh, excuse me, 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Central, you can call in right now, 844-747-2577. You can also submit your question via the chat window right there next to the video window. While you're there watching, if you're enjoying the program, give us a thumbs up. Click on that thumbs up right below the video window and subscribe to the program. That helps us grow. And we are, thank you, because we've got a lot of people we want to help. And you're a big part of that. So saw an, uh, saw an article you know, I'm going to restart that sentence, folks, because I like to teach out of these moments when I do this. You know, I get going 100 miles an hour, thinking fast, talking fast. And uh, when you kind of garble something like that, I can either act like it didn't happen, right? Or I'm just going to say it the right way. And it's okay, folks, for you to do that. You know, don't be all hung up on it. Because here's the key, little lesson. If you're doing a public speaking uh, class, uh, you will learn this. But for those of you doing presentations or you're speaking publicly, you don't have a lot of experience. And the big fear that you have is flubbing something, saying something wrong, mixing your words up or whatever. Let me tell you the secret to that whole deal. It won't be as scary when you realize that the audience doesn't care if you act like you don't care. But you get all uptight, the audience gets uptight. So the secret of that deal is the old phrase, never let them see you sweat. You just kind of own it, have fun with it, laugh with it, or just say, pardon me, and then say it again. And what will happen is the audience is just like, oh, okay, no big deal. So there you go. little extra bonus lesson in the program today. I uh, was reading this article uh, in Forbes magazine, and Sugar is the writer, what to do if you feel stuck while everyone else is moving. And I thought this is really timely. Because this pandemic has hit everybody differently, but pandemic or not, we are creatures of comparison. We just are. We want to fight comparison. Comparison is a cancer. It's an insidious, insidious disease if you let it take over your life. However, the fact is, that's what we do. We have eyes, therefore we look at other people, we go, well, they're making more progress than, than I am. And it makes us feel even more stuck than we already are. So anyway, uh, I saw this. Other, this is good. I want to see what she's got to say. And it's really good. First thing she says is, and, and I couldn't agree more, uh, the key to getting past comparison is to analyze yourself. Measure yourself. And we're going to talk about that later in the program. The idea is look at what you're doing. Measure your activity. Don't measure yourself against other people's activity. It's just dangerous. Don't do that. Uh the second thing she says is focus on small wins. When you're stuck, here's what happens. You're already dissatisfied with where you sit. And what happens is, is you go, oh gosh, I wanted to be there. And we start to look out. We, and we focus so much on that faraway place that we're not at yet. And it makes us feel even more insignificant. As opposed to going, I'm stuck, I'm not making the progress that I want to, let me just go get some easy wins, some easy momentum. So focus on smaller tasks, smaller wins, so that you, you feed off of that, the, the endorphins of accomplishment. And then the third thing is, is make sure you're helping others. 
You know, when you can get outside of your own frustrations, your own situation, and help somebody else improve their situation, I'm telling you right now, it's like a wonder drug. It's a wonder drug to getting emotionally healthier. So great, great article there. Those are three things that you can do and do every day, and it'll make a difference before you know it. You won't be focused on how stuck you are. You'll be focused on all the momentum you're beginning to experience. 844-747-2577, 844-747-2577. Coming up in a few minutes, we're going to get to a couple of emails we've got for our Momentum Monday segment where we read your progress so the audience can hear your momentum stories and inspire them to make some momentum in their own lives. 844-747-2577. Let's go to the phones. Jim is up first in Winfield, Missouri. Jim, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hi, Ken. My name is Jim, as you know, and I am a 62, almost 63-year-old a guy who has a call to ministry on his life. I've been a bivocational pastor. I went to Southwestern Seminary, got a couple of degrees from there. Um Excuse me, I've been on in credit and collections for about 20 to 25 years. Uh, would like to transition out of the daily collection kind of grind. I would like to be and have done in the past 20 years ago. Was a business analyst, loved it. I'm critically thinking, analytical kind of person. Want to know how to transition from what I've done in the past to what I want to do going forward. Mm-hmm. Well, so, and uh, go ahead. And, and Dave said something one time, and I'm like, huh, should I even include it on my resume? And that is, if people aren't all that interested in your degrees, what can you do for me? So I'm trying to figure out how to transition from where I've been, what I've done, and into a different role. Okay, so great. How do I- well, before we dive into that, I, 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 I think Dave's right, and that's why we have the Ken Coleman resume template that I want you to get. I'll make sure that Madison points you to it at the end of our call. I've got it. Good. I've got well, it. So, I'm using it. Okay, so, it. so what Dave is saying there is right, that the d- d- degree schm- schmagree, you know, it's like the last time you went to a doctor, you didn't ask the doctor to bring out the uh, framed picture of his diploma, did you? No. No, you didn't. Nobody cares. So Dave's right about that. Um, And that's why we focus on uh, the way we lay out the resume guide, because you are putting in front of people uh, a short, you know, kind of full, chock full paragraph about how you help them win. That's all they care about. At the end of the day, folks, and Jim, don't forget this. The hiring manager wants to figure out one thing. Can Jim help me win? That's all they want to know. And uh, so because you've been a business analyst before, you're going to go back into that previous experience and you're really going to dig deep on that and being a bivocational ministry guy, you've got the gift of gab and the gift of words, I could just tell. And so what you're going to do is you're going to paint a picture, not just for people that read the resume, but from everybody who knows you and who they know. And you're going to show them, um, I, I bring this to the table. I bring a lot of experience seasoning, discernment, uh, the ability to be a straight shooter, you know, whatever you would put out there about yourself. But I think you've really got to concoct a narrative. And I think, it, it, you know, you'll appreciate this. A lot of the youngsters that listen to my show have no idea what this means. But you got to develop the elevator pitch. You know, if you were riding from the first floor to the eighth floor, to the 10th floor, the 12th floor, whatever it is, with the, with the people who had the ability to hire you to do business analyst type work, what's your pitch as to why they would hire you? Almost 63-year-old Jim. And you've got to play that out. And wouldn't be a bad idea to record it and then type it out, look at it, and say, what's missing here? And uh, I think that's a good start for you, a really good start. Okay. Now, that's kind of the getting your mind where it needs to be and, and getting yourself in a position where you're confident in pitching yourself. Then this is just about the good old-fashioned proximity principle, my book. This is where you're looking at your world and you're going, okay, I'm in Winfield, Missouri. If I'm staying in this area, then I've got to I've got to look around and go, okay, who are the companies that hire those type of business analyst positions? What positions are actually available? Who's doing this work in this area that I can get around? And, and even post-COVID, 
you know, or, you know, if you're in Tennessee, we, we're, we're free. We're free people here. We're having coffee with people all the time. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm shaking hands and hugging. Y'all can judge me all you want to. I really don't care what you think about me and my COVID practices. But, um, you know, you could still connect with people. Okay, and so um, you're you're getting out there and you're getting around some people who are in that position and go, hey, um, what does that take now? You know, what? How different is that type of work than maybe it was 20 years ago? And it's almost like you turn yourself into a college kid and do a college level term paper on all the different positions that are similar to, or maybe a spinoff of the classic business analyst position and and the reason i'm telling you to do that jim is i don't want you to start the transition phase until you know what the lay of the land looks like and you may already know this so if you do skip that step but but after that jim you just want to move right into once you have a clear view of the landscape and what's out there and now what we're doing is is you're making all these connections so people go hey uh let me tell you about jim jim's a, a experienced business analyst Guy, 63 years of age, been around, knows his stuff. Uh, great guy, great culture fit. I think we need a spot for him. And so you are essentially drumming up interest in yourself through all of the connections that you're making. Because I can tell you this, the proximity principle is true. It's undeniable. In order for you to do, Jim, what you want to do, you got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. And you've got enough connections over 62, almost 63 years that it's just about focus. And, um, you know, there's no there's no silver bullet. It's just good old-fashioned hustle. But that's how you make the transition. All right. And I've worked out my resume so that, you know, if I know somebody and I've applied to places where I do know somebody, mm-hmm. when I'm doing that and I don't know, and I'm applying to a place that doesn't have anybody that knows me can i say i don't know anybody in your company but here's what my managers and supervisors have said yes yes and just boom 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 three bullet points about my supervisor said this my manager my director said you know my president of operations that's it yeah because what we do is for anybody else who's who's new to the show and they're looking at the ken coleman show resume the who i know if you don't have some connection to somebody in the building of company XYZ, then that who you know section is designed for people to go, wow, I've never seen a resume like that. Who does this guy say he knows? And that's where we want as strong of a endorsement statement as possible from people in that industry. So they at least go, oh, okay. All right, I see this. So Jim's been in this world. He's an insider. And that's what you're trying to do with that space. So absolutely spot on. That's what you do. And you got this, man. Listen, you've been there before. And uh, one thing I didn't mention that I think you'll get intuitively is when you go on back 20 years, you know, what are the connections that you still have? Where are those people at? Are they in that same space? Um, and then how has that business analyst job, how has that evolved? I'd want to know that. What are some other positions that maybe you don't instantly think of, but in doing this research and this homework, you find out, oh, I'm a good fit over here as well. I can do this job, this job, and this job. Three or four different things you figure out along the way. So, um, you know, a lot of this, folks, is so simple that most people don't think of it. And it just ref- it just requires intentionality, intentionality of thought, intentionality of connecting, and rinse and repeat. And that's how you get ahead. Eight four four seven four seven two five seven seven. All right, Madison, I'm going to try this one without your help and see if I can get it because I, I find these to be very challenging. Some of these city names you folks call in from or areas, townships. Let's go to Neil, who's joining us from Nescopec, Pennsylvania. Neil, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Did I say it right? You did, right on the nose. Oh, man, I got to tell you, that's very fun. Uh, How can I help today, Neil? So, Ken, I'm in a situation where I'll give you the rundown as as briefly as I can. I work in a family-owned industry that uh, is almost what you could consider franchised. Um, The work environment here is toxic, and I've been trying and unhappy trying to get out for what may be around two years. 
Um, the one thing that's keeping me here is someone in our management team had told me that, you know, you're the future. Uh, one day, you know, you can run this place possibly. Well, and while that was great hearing that, um, it wasn't coming from the person that needed to our ownership. Yeah. So long story short, I ended up, um, interviewing somewhere maybe around two years ago and my employer found out and basically all I wanted was them to invest in me, right. To, to make this official. Well, that started to happen. And because of this franchise, um, you can't just go out and buy it and they want to make sure that they have the right people in place. So basically what happens, we sat down and we started talking about the experiences that, you know, I would need. It was the franchise people. It was our management team, our ownership and myself. And we established this plan, which would take around, um, two and a half years to complete until I had all the training necessary to, to move into the next role. The, the problem comes where it's been almost a year and I haven't really completed any of it because the company traditionally runs on a skeleton shift where this guy covers for that guy. And, and, you know, long story short, a year later, haven't got much done. So I've been looking recently and now using your resume, I got a, a phone interview and it went well. Um, now I'm to the point where I'm almost nervous uh, to potentially leave. So my Why? question is, is, Why are you nervous? Be specific. Uh, so I'm nervous. Well, one reason is, is one of the, the terms or the sentences said to me was that, you know, if you do run this place one day, you can make a lot of money or you could be uh, the highest seat in this place one day. That's, that's my biggest what if. However, I also realized that uh, I could go through this and, you know, due to the lay of the land here, ownership is well past retirement. They don't need to, to work to make a living. They're here because they want to be here. If I don't get this completed in the time that is necessary, I could waste my time here. And then lo and behold, you know, six months from now, a year from now, maybe ownership goes and sells the franchise rights to, to somebody else. And then I find myself, um, I'm losing all that time and effort, uh, for, for really no reason where I could have been somewhere else learning and advancing. Um, so really I'm uncomfortable, uh, with what may happen. So I'm kind of looking for advice as to do I sit down? Am I, am I complaining that, uh, I'm not getting freed up to go do this training? No, do I take no, the next no, 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 no. So, so let, let's, let me just ask one question and I'm going to tell you, cause you've given me all, in fact, I think you gave yourself the best advice. <laughs> I think you talked yourself into what I'm about to tell you anyway. So this will be great for you because you gave me A or B and, uh, and I'm going to tell you my answer, but okay. I want to know, are you a family member? You're not correct. No, no, I'm, no, I'm not. And they I'm have not. no family member that has raised their hand. They've got nobody that's a, a potential heir apparent that's in the family. There, there was two family members, one, um, who, uh, franchise leadership doesn't believe has the knowledge, skills or ability. Uh, so that one's out. And the other one actually used to work here, but left as well because the environment is yeah. bad. So and that's how me, I ended up in this situation. Right. So you started off the phone call telling me that the environment was toxic and in a toxic environment where it's a family owned business, where you're not a family member, I got news for you outside of a miracle from the Holy spirit himself. It's not going to change. All right. So right. that's bad mm -hmm. news, but here's the good news. The good news is you realize it, but there, your brain keeps going, don't leave. What if you leave? What if you leave? And they all of a sudden get converted and decide they want to give it to you and you just kiss away millions. That's what your brain's telling you. Am I right? Right. I got news yeah. for you. They're not going to do it. So let me set you free. Uh, they told you this plan would happen. The plan hasn't happened. The plan hasn't happened for the same reason that it's a toxic environment. These might be very good people, but they are awful leaders. Can I get an amen? Amen. All right, then. So 
you got no control over that. It's not going to change. They're almost retired. They're past retirement age. They couldn't change if I showed them how to change. That's my opinion. So, right. take the new opportunity, or take, or or if this isn't a great opportunity now, I want to shift to the future. This opportunity right now, if it gets offered to you, does it put you on the path towards fulfilling your purpose? Yes or no? Yes. Then take it and don't look back. You hear me? Because yeah. your very analysis is option B, and I'm telling you to take option B because you're going to waste more time and more time and more time just hoping that they're going to have some miraculous thing happen and all of a sudden decide to do everything they told you they were going to do. I think that they're stringing you along like I would a puppy trying to train a puppy. You know what I mean? Just come here, buddy. You know, they're just sure. playing games with you. I don't think it's insidious. I don't think they're evil people, but I just, they're just not healthy leaders. So it's time for you to leave, man. And uh, you sure. will feel so free. Now, at first, your brain's going to try to go, boy, I hope that wasn't a mistake. That's what your brain's going to tell you as you're walking out the door. Uh, but that's yeah. the voice of doubt, and that's a lie from the pit of hell, and you just need to ignore it because you need to focus on your future. So I really appreciate the call. Um, I want you to make sure you do not leave until you've got something to leave to. You understand what I'm saying? Sure, absolutely. All right, man. I really appreciate uh, the call, Neil, and your best days are ahead of you. Don't question that for a second. You go be you. You know, there is, uh, there's something to this, though, folks. I don't want us to skip over this. Don't skip over the fact that our brains are designed to protect us. So understand this is this is neuroscience, this is nature. God put our brains in our head to help us with logic and making decisions and also to protect ourselves. However, the brain can play tricks on you. And when we start looking at new opportunities and leaving what we know, even though it's toxic, here's Neil. By the way, Neil's not an abnormal person. Neil's just like me and you. Neil stuck in toxicity. He's waiting around in the sewer. That's essentially what he's saying. He has an opportunity to climb out of the sewer. He can see it. He knows if he climbs up there, he's out. And yet he goes, I don't know. I don't know if I should leave the sewer. And the backstory is something that Neil didn't mention, and I want to call this out. Yes, there's a part of him that goes, boy... What if they do change their mind and give me what they say they're going to give me and then I make millions or whatever the situation is? That's part of it. The other part of it is he's going, I kind of know this environment. Yeah, it's the sewer, but kind of gotten used to the sewer. And folks, this is good old-fashioned fear of change. Something about our brain goes, all right, now look, I know you're thinking about change, but hold on. What are all the negative things that could happen that could hurt you? That's what our brain does. And, and again, receive that, but step into it and go, okay, brain, I'll go there. Could this happen? Let's play it out. Could this happen? Let's play it out. Could this happen? Let's play it out. And then we get to the point where we go, okay, thank you, brain. I got it. But that's what you've got to do. You've got to really take it head on or else you'll stay stuck in the pit because you're used to the pit and you go, I know it's the pit, but you know, I'm Okay. I can do this a little longer and you lie to yourself a little longer and you lie to yourself a little longer and you look up and two years turn to 20 years. This is what happens, folks. And it's and it's really, really dangerous. Be careful. All right. It's time for a little Momentum Monday. Joe, I think we need a jingle next Monday. I want to work with you on that. I think we need a little music. You know what I mean? We need, we'll a, little, we need a little something here. You know, instead of me just moving, you know, I, I'll do a little something. Make people feel the juice. I'm on it. All right. So uh, we've asked for this. Uh, because we we get these emails all the time and social media posts and Damon, the brand manager, by the way, who's back in the control room today. So this is, I feel very important anytime he decides to grace us with his presence. Um, but, uh, you know, Madison, Joe, Damon, they're talking about it's like, we need to share these because we all get the juice when we read about you all winning. And so we said, email us, ask at KenColeman.com, put Momentum Monday in the subject line, and we want to brag on you. And so here we go. Uh, Whitney writes in, I called the show back in February because I felt I was not being heard or recognized by my leadership. Ken, you recommended that I get John Maxwell's book, The 360 Degree Leader, and told me that I should become the go-to person. 
because even if my leadership didn't recognize me, my colleagues would, and I could earn a reputation for getting things done. Then COVID happened. Oh, I always like when this happens in the email. I spent the first 12 weeks of the pandemic in a get it done mode. If there was something leadership needed, I found a way to get it done and get it done quickly. But it also meant I was working 70 hours a week too. She goes, now we're five months into this thing and I've never been happy at work. Every single member of my executive team has recognized the quality and the quantity of work I've been able to do. She's earning big credibility, folks. Way to go, Whitney. Now, that, see, now this is something. That Whitney's taking a negative and she's going, what can I do? I don't feel I'm being recognized. So instead of griping and complaining and saying, woe is me, Whitney's saying, what can I do to get leadership to pay attention to me? And she's crushing it. Way to go, Whitney. Uh, Karen writes in. Boy, this is an unfortunate time to be named Karen, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's or uh, uh, yeah, is that right? Yeah, the male equivalent of Karen is a Ken. You got to be kidding me! I thought you were joking. No. Oh, terrific! You haven't heard that? No, I haven't. Oh, I need to tell your kids. Great. So the negative, the the uh, tattletale in COVID. If it's a dude, they call him a Ken. Yep. Oh boy, that's really great. You're welcome. And I don't like my middle name, so I'm screwed. I won't say it on air. All right, thank you. Please don't. Uh, okay, back to uh, Karen. After I graduated in December 2019, the coronavirus hit and the job market disintegrated. I tried applying for CPS jobs and also jobs in the foster care system. No one would call me back or they would just turn me down. So I began listening to your show, bought your proximity principle book at the recommendation of my sister. Um, so then I applied at a Chick-fil-A just to bring in some income. And to my surprise, I have found my sweet spot. I've been there for three months. I'm now a certified trainer and I'm on, I'm on my way to becoming a shift manager and eventually a director. I also am getting used to using my talents to develop others. I've never felt more fulfilled in my job. Wow. Karen, that is fan stinking tastic that's right folks fan stinking tastic that's better than fantastic that's like a little extra fantastic um ask at kencoleman.com is the email address for you to share your momentum story we want to brag on you and uh, joe and i are going to work together we're going to have some cool some kind of cool fun thing to introduce momentum monday 844-747-2577 let's go to the chat room we're motoring along coming up in just a moment i'm going to teach you on the only person you should compare yourself to. That's coming up. Cody's first. He says, Ken, I'm 18, and I want to build and own my own athletic center. Is it worth it to cash flow my way through college and get a financial or business degree? Sure. Sure. That's certainly a worthy endeavor. Um, cash flowing your way is always the way to do it because you're a guy who's going to need some cash eventually anyway. So by not putting yourself behind the eight ball, and going into debt means that you can get there faster. And the only thing I'll challenge you with is this. Talk to some people who run gyms. This is where I'd start. It's the proximity principle. Get around people who are doing what you want to do. Get in places where it's happening. Get around some people that are running gyms. Try to learn what they think would be the best educational piece. Is it a finance degree? Is it a master's degree in business? Is it just a good old-fashioned business degree? Or they say, you know what? Don't know that you need a degree. I'd take these business courses here, here, and here. I'd, I'd get in a system, work for somebody who runs a gym. I mean, could be several ways to do this is my point. And there always is. So check into that. Henry writes, I'm interviewing for a new position. And I'm excited about it. What tips do you have for remote interviewing that differ from tips you'd have for in-person interviewing? Not many differences. So I'll save the list of things and I'll tell you that are um, just go to KenColeman.com and get the how to win the interview guide and that will answer your questions if they're similar to uh, Henry's. The only thing I would add that's not included in that how to win the interview guide for the remote video interview is in person there is some chemistry between you and the person. Right? You're able to read each other's faces, your eyes, your body language, all that's happening in person. In a video interview, they can still see you. 
and they can read your body language, but there's not that natural energy there. So I really believe, and uh, I didn't write this anywhere, but this is the only thing I'd say about the remote video interview. I'd get the camera, whatever camera you're using, phone, iPad, cam- uh, 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 Mac, PC, whatever. I'd get it up high at standing level, and I'd put it on some books so that it's the, the camera is almost eye level, and I'd be in a standing position. Uh, there is all kinds of research out there about the body language plus the energy, the confidence that is emitted when you're standing. And I tell this to people all the time, young people, if you're on a phone job, I, I'd be walking around. I would not be sitting at my desk making phone calls all day. If I was a salesperson on the phone all day, I'd be walking around, standing up. There's a better energy there, and I think that'll come across. That's a little thing, but uh, that's what I would do. Everything else, do it exactly the way we tell you in the How to Win the Interview Guide. 844-747-2577. 844-747-2577. All right, we're going to do just a, a quick couple of moments on this, and then uh, Michael uh, in Orlando, Florida, hang on, I'm coming to you. So I've taught about this before, but this is a theme and a topic that I'm going to rinse and repeat a good bit. And we have a lot of new people watching the show. So I want to give this to you. I mentioned comparison early on in the program. And I got to tell you, the weakest moments of my life, the moments of great frustration, the moments where I was stuck for the longest amount of time, I will tell you the insidious disease that that was really the culprit the source of all of the yuck of being stuck. And that is comparison. There's nothing like comparison. Comparing yourself to other people's journey, comparison to other people's timeline, comparison to other people's stuff, comparison to other people's money, all that stuff. I'm telling you something. You want to get in a bad place, start comparing yourself. I mean, I'm I'm just going to tell you. I mean, I'm in a good spot right now. I could end this show and walk into a room by myself and start comparing myself to other people, and I'm going to get to a really low place quick. It just, it's just a reality, folks. So understand that. Like, You're not immune to this. I'm not immune to this. This is the stuff that kills dreams. Comparison kills contribution. I can't contribute what I'm supposed to contribute to the level that I am supposed to contribute it if I'm focused on what everybody else is contributing. I just can't. So the only person that it's okay to compare yourself to is the you of yesterday. Yesterday. I look back at yesterday's Ken and I need to look back at tomorrow. I need to look back at Monday's Ken and go, did I get better? Where's there a pattern here that I'm not improving upon? What are some things here that I go, oh, that could be better. Now, if I'm comparing myself to the me of last year and the me of yesterday and the me of five years ago, whether it be in my personal life as a husband or a father or in my uh, personal life as it relates to friends and relationships or how about my physical life? How about my spiritual life? How about where I'm at just emotionally? Am I emotionally as healthy as I was a year ago? Am I more healthy than I was six months ago? That's the comparison conversation that is actually really healthy, really yields results. That's it. If you start comparing yourself to other people, bad. You just look at yourself, compare yourself to where you were, where you are, where you want to be, that comparison, it's lifeblood. It's lifeblood. By the way, if comparison to other people is a cancer, then comparing your current self with who you were or who you have been with the context of where I want to go, if comparison to others is cancer, comparing yourself to the you of yesterday is the antidote to content. Just this idea of, well, I'm going to be content. I'm just going to be content with where I am. I'm never going to grow again. That's what I mean when I say contentment. All right? At at the end of the day, you need to always be growing yourself. Now, you need to be content in other areas of your life with what you have. That's a gratitude issue. But 
you yourself and your growth, it's not a good place to be content. You need to be growing. Because if you're not growing, you're dying. So understand that if you don't want to get in a, a, a place of complacency and just content with your progress, then always be comparing yourself to where you were. And you're going to see some real life change. So there you go. 844-747-2577 is the number. All right, let's go. Michael is up next in Orlando, Florida. Michael, you're on the Ken Coleman Show. Hey, Ken. How are you, Michael? Um, I'm good. How can I help? Um, so my question is um, to do with using your resume to help me try to land to work with um, a modeling agency or like working with a magazine. Okay. What, what specific work do you want to do? I'm a photographer. Great. Have you ever been in that industry? The uh, modeling? Uh... I've been doing it for quite some time now, yes. Oh, great. So what specifically can I help you with? Where, if, so if you've been in the field, you've got a good amount I've of connections. I've using your resume template uh -huh. now, but I know about it, in your proximity firm, it says like meeting individuals in, the, say, that magazine or say with that agency. But with this particular industry, I feel that that's not just where I need to be going, but also putting maybe something else on top of meeting individuals that work for those companies. Okay. But, but again, I, you're being a little bit vague for me to be specific. So either, so are you looking at other, uh, other industries where you can be a professional photographer and expanding there? Uh, no. Okay. I'm say I'm wanting to work with and say, or be used by a magazine to specifically do specific shoots not just having to submit, trying to get, in a sense, get hired to do specific shoots for a modeling agency or a specific magazine. Okay. So this is all about relationships. No matter what, you know, however you lay that out, you know where you want to end up. Yes or no? Yes. yes all right. All right, then. So, so on your resume, uh, when you're making these uh, connections and trying to get hired, you know, you've been in the industry a long time, uh, at least long enough to where you've got some really great relationships. And so if you want to work for a magazine and kind of be a salaried employee, if I'm hearing you correctly, then you really want to leverage any relationships you have um, in the magazine space. So you get those people endorsing you and opening up some doors for you um, so that you can have those conversations, which will lead to opportunities for magazines. So it's the same as if I just said, I'm done with radio and I only want to do TV. So what do I need to do? Well, I'm, I'm going back and looking at my entire database and, and my entire journey in broadcasting. I'm going, okay, how many radio people do I know that have good TV connections? Do I know any TV people at all? If I'm trying to make that switch, which by the way, never going to happen, but if I wanted to go to hard news and read a teleprompter, you know, and uh, this guy, you know, uh, this guy stole something over here in the 42nd block, whatever, you know, and just read the prompter. I've got to go to people who make that decision, who go, you know what, I think Ken probably could read the prompter, even though he's never done that anchor role. Let's try him out. How would I even get that opportunity? By making enough good connections where somebody goes, I'm telling you, the guy can read and uh, he's done live, blah, 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 blah. Same thing with the photographer. So, hey, Michael's a great photographer. He's done this. He's had done these shoots. He's worked for this, you know. And so you have to have somebody banging the drum for you to the people who are the decision makers at magazines. And so that's how specific you've got to be. Who do I know that knows somebody that works at a magazine? They may work at HR. But if they work at HR, trust me, they know who's hiring over there. They know who's hiring photographers. And so we start that way. You know, we go get some information. Then we go, okay, now that I know this person, uh, who's ever worked? Do I have any photography friends that have been hired contract-wise to go do work for this magazine? Hell yeah, 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 okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. All right, let me call them, you know. And so it's just a connect the dots type exercise where you get to the point where you want people endorsing you that have enough relationship entree, if you will, to the people who are the decision makers. Then they start hearing good things about you from multiple sources. And then when the opportunity arises, 
you're on the top of their mind. That's the game. That's the game. And uh, there's no secret strategy. It's just good old fact, uh, good old fashioned. Make the connection and keep the connection alive. And that's when opportunities knock on your door. Well, that's going to do it, folks. My time is almost up. But before I let you go, you matter. You do have what it takes. Thanks so much for joining us. Until next time, this is The Ken Coleman Show. Press on.